moly. What a day. Oh, I have scarce ever had so much craziness at once in a day for a very long time. All right. Drinking thing. Yes, drinking thing is over there. Good, 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 good. All right, everybody. Well, we're about to do some crafting here. I got a skull to work on. I got potion bottles to work on. Ugh. That skull might not, it's not quite staining yet, but that bottle is. So we're definitely staining at least one bottle tonight. Oof. Oh my god. There we go. Evening, Carmen. How's it going, Chris? Whew. And hello to everybody on the Facebook. Chris Nolan, Billy, Amanda, and Michael and Tiffany and Karen. Hope everybody is having a tolerably decent Wednesday night. <laughs> At least I hope it's Wednesday. I'm losing track of time with all the craziness that happened today. All right. Brought that up from the car. Mushy paste. Okay, I've worked on the bottom of that potion bottle. This one's getting stained. It's all ready to go. Oh, did it? Oh. I think we're going to start with this. I want to get a project done. As soon as I have that stained. That's going to be done enough for government work. And since I am still off meds because the hospital is full of chowderheads, I am going to use this time to at least have a good goblet of mead. And then we're going to get that bottle stained. And I need to mix up some more stain. It's getting down to the dregs. It has been too much of a day, though, not to have a good, nice sip. Ah, skull. I haven't been able to do alcohol in quite a while because until hospital ineptness, I have been on a med to assist me with weight loss. And it was going very well until the insurance company decided to say, wait, that's working. You can't use that. And this med does not get along with alcohol. So I have been teetotaling it since I got that. Oh, what the hell. But since I've been off it for more than a week and a half now, I don't feel the need to teach over it anymore. Okay. Instead, I'm going to grab my wonderful German Stein from the Rheinblick restaurant in Canandaigua. And enjoy the paradise that is Black Jewel Mead. And then I'm going to get this bottle stained. Yeah, no kidding. Yep, you know, it would rather let me get... In fact, it's not get, it's a matter of stay overweight. And, well, I'm not going to tempt the fates with the raging debate about being overweight, because blah, 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 it's a choice, and yes, I could be exercising and dieting and all that fun stuff, but uh, a little help is nice, and that medication was working so nicely. Things were going down. It was great. Yeah, it's pretty functional, Sabrina. It's pretty darn functional. Keeps me out of trouble. 
my house purchase got one, two, three major obstructions today. So, <laughs> I, am, I am just in a screw it, let's craft mood. I am tired of playing phone tag with banks and insurance and doctors and realtors. Well, not realtors, but all the nonsense. Oh my god, could this thing be any more in there? In the art. And all I want to do is just and craft. <laughs> I just want to craft. Yep. A little bit of mead. Oh my god, it's delicious. Oh, I haven't had uh, black jewel mead in a while. I forgot I need to clean off the exposed parts of the bottle. All that water went away. That's awful. Thank the gods, I have some more in here. That's enough. Oh. Okay, let's get the clean sections free from excess mache paste. You don't have to be talented, you just have to be persistent. My first pumpkin looks awful compared to my current work. But I kept at it. Very common misconception of both students and other people is that you have to have some sort of talent. And they see the work that other people are doing and they go, oh my god, I could never do that. And that's not true. All you have to do is do it. And you will get better at it. Regardless of how you start out. You will get better at it until your work is as amazing as you want it to be. But your first work in almost anything may disappoint you. You just have to be ready for that and say, screw it, I enjoy it, and keep on going. Damn right. Happy little mistakes. Ten bucks says my cats go into full activity mode now that I'm in the kitchen. When I'm sitting in the living room, it's sit around, sit around, sit around, stare at me, blink. When I'm in the kitchen, it's like, ooh, now you need to pay attention to me. I already heard one tearing arse through the hallways. And now whining in the background. What are you mowing about? That was a pitiful mow. <laughs> I am guessing that Madge does not want to play with him right now. And he is not happy about that. That's usually the sound he makes when his mom doesn't want to play with him. Alright, this is just about cleaned up. There we go. Give it a quick dry and then we'll stay. Oh my word, what a day. Stop tumultuous adventure and excitement. All right, one mirror bottle ready to go. Mm. Evening, Pearly, how's it going? Right, where do 
I want to hold? <laughs> Let's hold it here. That way I can actually be able to grip part of it when I get the stain all over the everywhere. <sighs> you too, huh? It seems to be a day for days. I had a day too. <laughs> so what's been your day, Pearly? What has caused all the conundrums and shenanigans? How's it going, Clifton? This product is cotton balls that have been unrolled and dipped in paper mache paste and a mirror that I broke up into shards and hot glued sections of onto this bottle. Oh, a new spec ed teacher room, especially if they're having trouble adjusting. Are they trying to get all vengeful? That's usually the the fallback position of many a teacher when they are uh, having trouble. We start coming down on the rules. Why aren't the kids following the rules? Dun dun dun. Someone needs to make the kids follow the rules. YouTube drama? What? Awesome, good stuff, Clifton. I didn't know YouTube had drama. <laughs> Most of my drama on here I solve with a simple block. <laughs> it's easy. Oh, a new graduate spec ed teacher. So that would mean I am guessing that she is heavily overwhelmed and potentially feels very unprepared. Ah, okay. Gatlinburg. Where is Gatlinburg, Ross? Thanks, Sabrina. Yep, yeah, that's usually the other one, especially if it's a new teacher. They always get very overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Yeah, it's that make or break time for teachers as well. You get that first little bit and either you can handle it and you'll be able to handle it for the next until you retire or you'll burn out in about three years or less. Oh, embarrassed a kid in class, rut row. Gotcha, now you're a kid, okay. Gotta be careful when you use the embarrassment technique. Sometimes it can blow up in your face and polarize that kid against you for the rest of the well, usually not year, but at least for a good long while until you regain the trust. North Carolina border, eastern Tennessee. Smoky Mountains, nice. Mountains are good. Cat! What for you, Mao? Oh, my God. Living room, hours, nothing. Kitchen, five minutes. Wow, wow. <laughs> what? Get over here, Dumbo. Come here. Get some pets. They're all stare at my hand. Come on, get pet. Get pet, you silly bear. Yeah. No kidding, Alberto. Mmm. Yeah, nine's a tough one. So let's see here. That will be sixth and fifth graders. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is uh, a rough time, especially to be doing special ed. Very rough time. Yeah. And depending on the region you're from, too, sometimes, uh, particularly in a number of households, well, at least around here, you find that um, often at that age when things are going through and they're very formative, um, if the household is in chaos, and you have a divorce or a jailed parent or something like that, it really, really amps the systems, the emotional systems into overdrive of kids at those age, ages or there. That is a really rough time to be able to emotionally process things. Hopefully the home life is stable and it's just uh, learning disabilities. Ruh -ruh. <laughs> yep, definitely gonna. Well, everything you do or say in a special ed classroom is. Um, has an added effect. You gotta really watch what you're up to. And building relationships is one, even. One of the most key aspects of that. Yep, hormone angst can start around that time. Yeah, sounds like you got a perfect storm brewing there, Pearly. A very perfect storm, unfortunately. Oh, not shouting your parents. Yipe. Yipe, 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 no. That is not one you want to do. Of course, that depends on the area, too. <laughs> Everybody give me a second. I need to give my cat some catnip because he was going bananas. Let's uh let's anesthetize this for all or get over here. See ya. Come here. Yeah, Madge doesn't want to play. You feel a little lonely. Come on. Nope. Yep. Alright, give me one sec. Let's go get this fuzz nut some nip. Hi. What? You, why are you all depressed now? Now. When I sit down to crap, now we're having a bad day. Hours ahead of time and everything's fine. But the instant dad sits down to craft, bad day. You little snot. Oh boy. Come on. <laughs> Can't feel sad and lonely when he's up to his ear eyeballs and catnip. Whew. Hey Elvish. And you lost your glasses, damn. <laughs> Pearly, what gods did you piss off? <laughs> I can't compete, you win. <laughs> My day was just repudiantly annoying.
Oh dear. <laughs> Well, if you live in Florida, you definitely pissed off some weather gods. Well, I hope as many are safe from that coming hurricane as possible. We're approaching the can't touch this stage. Good. Swinging sexy mirrored witch bottle. Awesome. Mm. Damn, that stuff's delicious. Oh. oh, so there's the intermittent product. safe as possible. I think I got all the spots. Yeah, a lot of the stuff with any kind of gem effect I find maintains a certain delightful level of creepiness while at the same time being strangely beautiful in its own regard. I'm just going to give the mirror sections a quick wipe down while the stain is still <laughs> not fixed. No, that hurricane came zipping right up. Usually we don't have two landfall hurricanes in such close succession like this. It's somewhat rare. Yeah. I know this is the first time I have seen two landfall hurricanes this close together. Come here. Yeah. The warmth certainly has been Oddly persistent. It's uh, it was almost 80 degrees up here today in northern New York. Well, now central New York. I used to live in northern New York, but um, not used to it being quite this temperature this time of year. Hey, Skibs, how's it going? took your guys' advice. I put a, a PayPal donation type thing into the channel because all those other places just rob people. So we found the one that takes the least. That looks pretty good. Projects aren't going bad. Not bad at all. I was just happy to get this one stained and we just got the mirrors clean so there's the reflecting ingredient bottle which I really would like filled with some sort of red fluid 
when we get closer to Halloween. Mineral spirits for the brush. Then I'll work on that skull. And then I'll work on this other bottle. And I'm just going to try to wipe off the day. <laughs> uh, so, Pearly wins the day. For me, I just found out that I have two major obstructions to my house purchase all of a sudden first major obstruction is the fact that several years ago, the State Tax Bureau thought that I made 70 some odd thousand plus dollars a year and decided to charge me taxes based on that. And I have never made that much money in a year in my entire life because I'm just a humble little school teacher. And so then they started getting uppity and I kept telling them, hey, <laughs> I didn't make that much. And they kept getting uppity, and then they started garnishing me, and I said, you know what, I probably owe them for a few bucks when I was stupid in my youth, and when I went over to England and didn't bother to tell any tax authority that I'd done that. So, fair is fair, take a couple bucks, guys, but now I can't get the house loan to go through until all the tax warrant stuff is taken care of. So... I need to go to war with the New York State Tax Authority, which is never a fun and fantastic business. And I'm not looking forward to it. And then I found out that this house, which was told to me, it was not in the flood zone, not in the flood zone, nobody has ever played fun insurance on this house, comes up as being in a flood zone. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hate fighting with tax people. Because even at best, you're sitting on the phone for hours at a time, waiting for somebody to talk to you. And half the time, they're just going to give you the runaround. They mean well. Nobody in there is intentionally trying to make your day lousy. It just sort of happens because you're in that situation to begin with. No, if this place needs flood insurance, I'm not. I'm going to back right out of the deal. There is no way in God's green earth. Because as of right now, the way the mortgage is, I would be paying a tolerably hefty amount, plus all the extra expenses of um, you know, power, sewer, heating, everything else. And if you add on to that two, three hundred extra a month for flood insurance, that just takes it right out of my affordability range. So either I tell the current owner, look, uh, I can't pay you anywhere near as much as I quoted because there's no way I'll be able to make mortgage payments if I'm forking over my livelihood with every check. Or it'll just be, deals off, man. <laughs> you said no flood insurance. Now there's flood insurance. I can't pay that. No. Done. I'll continue to rent if you continue renting, but I can't buy it. <laughs> I'd leave New York, but... I've got to wait for June, July at the very least, because I will not walk out on my students midway through a school year. Staffing around here is so precarious, they would not be able to get another qualified individual in until at least March, April, May. And that means somebody else from my team has to cover my position, usually desperately, or the school has to hire an unqualified sub. And then all my kids fail their Regents exams, and I will not do that to them. Hey, Stassi, how's it going? I almost said Stassi. <laughs> See, it's been that kind of a day. Pearly still wins, though. Uh, 
in Michigan, huh? <laughs> eh, we'll see. The other trouble I have with moving is that <laughs> it's taken me six years to break into this town. I am not a natural go out and hang out at bars, make friends, and do all that kind of people or person. And situations of prolonged loneliness tend to drive me somewhat insane. Now that I've finally broken in around here, I do not all of a sudden where did that linen go? Want to be left in the lurch again. Oh. oh my god, where's the lantern? Lantern, 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 lantern. How many places could the lantern have gone? For God's sakes. Oh. Where did the lantern go? Lantern go. Lantern. There's a lantern. Why did I even stand up? If I did move, where would I go? I don't know. I've been halfway decent at going where the winds take me, but I really don't want to move anymore. I have moved every single year, every two to three years, my entire life, until I got here. This is the last place I actually haven't had to move all the frickin' time. And, uh... I don't know as I really want to. Yeah, this is the only time I've ever stayed in a place for any length of time. Oh. Alright. That skull's not looking too bad. I was thinking I wanted more witch wood or thicker witch wood, but I definitely don't want it to go into the pache paste. That back is still a little thin. I wouldn't mind some more coming up from the bottom. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> ah, to North Carolina. Not bad. Yes. Now, moving is appalling. I hate moving. I'm sick of moving. Is it going to buy this place? It's going to set up shop. I don't know. All right. Now, we're going to do some more witch wood here. I want more strands there. I want thicker strands on this. I want to take this right to the top of the skull. Yeah, I want more. More! More which wood! More. Alright, give me a saturation chamber. Wow, this brush is all clean for once. Alright, saturation chamber. Um, do we do upside down skull or do we do right side up skull? And we hope the cats haven't just broken something. Wow, I have never seen them like this before. If they get a little too rowy, one of them's gonna go in the bathroom until he calms down. Yeah, sure can, Stacy. Absolutely. Uh, what I would do is I'd find some way to either get mache or something else on that surface first because paper clay on foam can't guarantee that the stuff will stick very well what do you want to pour over them Can't quite deduce exactly what you're trying to do from that statement. Paint over them. Okay, yeah. 
Um, I mean, you can straight up paint on them already if you want. But if you want to design and sculpt and do more stuff over them, then, yeah. I would be tempted... Well, let's face it. Is If they are the actual store brand Funkins, the externals of those look more pumpkin-like than than a mache pumpkin. If they are, however, like crappy dollar store-ish or cheapo open cell foam, which is that crumbly stuff that turns into a whole bunch of white snowflakes when you crumble it, then yeah, either take masking tape over the outside and uh, then apply the paper clay, or I would be tempted to use a, um, I would flat up get some Elmer's glue, some white glue, and I would paint that on the surface, and then I would slap uh, just paper mache strips over that, and then I would put, well, probably not another layer of glue over that, but anywhere it meshed, just because the tape will be all right, and masking tape is best, but I really like that paper on paper hold. If you're planning on going all the way around, then just use tape. But if you're planning on sectionalizing it, get some uh, get some paper underneath. Yeah, I guess that would probably work too. No problem. The sticky effect of paper clay only likes to stick to other cellulose or other natural type fibers like cotton or plant based fibers so when you apply it to styrofoam it'll probably stick it just won't stick great but again if you're encompassing it all the way around it won't really matter there you go yeah give the outside some masking tape and then shove clay on it just watch your intermediary steps so the clay does not fall off. I don't think it will. Shouldn't. If it were me, <laughs> I would put a layer of tape on it. Or at least a bunch of strips of tape that cover most of it. If I didn't want to waste a whole huge section of tape. And then I'd put one layer of paper mache strips on it. And then I'd clay on that. That's how I would do it. But you can probably get away with just masking tape. I'm kind of anal retentive about my procedures. <laughs> but that's just me, and I'm a little kooky. Yeah, that would be my procedure. Yeah, hard piece of cotton. All right. Let's get some serious branches in this skull. And then later on, let's pick up that lighter. much. <laughs> yeah, you don't half arse this stuff. You don't half arse it. You don't speed it. You just do it right. Thank God I'm not in my teens anymore. I wanted to rush everything. <laughs> the paint needs to dry overnight. Dad, is there a way we can do it in 10 minutes? No. What? What do you mean, no? <laughs> All right. So, let's do bigger, thicker branches. I want which wood here, not which maybe. Which maybe is for the chumps. This is which wood.
Let's see here. Which would tail? Um, are you going after a particular animal form on the tail, or what kind of thickness are we looking at? Because that kind of dictates your procedure. Like dog tail. Okay. Um, all right. So what I would do is thick piece of wire. Then take some either crumpled paper balls, skewer and slide them over the wire. Build up your bulk with that. Or the other thing you do is just get some paper and start wrapping the wire, but that'll take for flip all ever. But your uh, your tail will be more solid and heavy. But if I was just doing it to do it, crumple paper ball, skewer it on the wire, slide it down, have more slid down, just have it like a whole bunch of paper crumple balls. Then I would add a little bit of tape to get them together. Then I would take probably just some regular roll paper and go around that one or two layers to even out so that after where I mache it I don't get ball 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 but I get one smooth section so you have the crumpled paper balls on the inside core wrapped with maybe one to three layers of newsprint to even out the whole shape and then I would tape that do maybe one layer of mache strips on there just to make sure it's cemented and then I would do which wood on top of that because otherwise you'll be bulking with which wood and that will take you two and a half years or use God, I'm an idiot use um use pool noodle just use a piece of pool noodle that'll get you a smoother transition Oh yeah, you could definitely do witch wood on arms and legs. Yeah, now that I'm thinking of it, don't <laughs> don't do that paper crumpled stuff. The guy who suggested that was an idiot. Now just get your wire, cut yourself out a section of pool noodle. Probably just cut a strip out of one. Slide that over the wire. It's one transition. It's all foam core. Then give it an outer layer of uh, single mache. Uh, layer and then which wood on top of that That'll be a hell of a lot faster than uh, Paper balls and other crap and you know, it'll be smooth the whole way through you don't have to worry about any inconsistencies of form Hmm. Oh, no sweat. It reminds me, I had to bring some cotton to work. I'm making a pumpkin there with uh, a couple of my classes. And I would like to throw some witch wood on it in spots. So if I put those cotton balls down there, I should remember that for tomorrow. Not that I'll have much time tomorrow, but. <laughs> oh, today was such a fart. My, I am still a little French fried from all the annoying, nasty news from today. There we go. That is a much thicker piece. That's a serious branch. Top sections a little more serious. Yeah. All right, let's get some tiny pieces down here. <laughs> Remember, Inktober is voluntary. You can do what you want to do. You're an adult. 
You can work on what you want to work on. <laughs> it's an excuse to make drawing people draw more who haven't been drawing. <laughs> If you're artifying, then you can artify with whatever you want to art with. <laughs> there we go. Let's get a scrap in there. Now well, there you go. I've been looking at some of the new pieces that uh, Chad Savage has been putting out. They look pretty cool. <coughs> I kind of wish I still did uh, more sketch art, but I haven't been doing that in a very long time. Let's grab those rocks. There for weight. Oh no, my stein is half empty. Can't have that. And there's another witch bottle. ice cubes. Sadly, I have none prepared. Alright, bigger, thicker branches. Let's cover that ugly arse hole on the top. I've never liked that thing. Does it still look good? Yeah, it still looks good. That's fine. All right, only half full. Now is more all full. Well, it's not all full, but it's more full. <laughs> it is the stein that never ends. I just keep pouring into it, my friend. Tinier bits. It's got to look more evil than that. Oh, my favorite board game store had another sale today. They're so evil. Feel good though. I managed to take a gigantic list of board games down to three. It was a victory for savings. Although, only one game I did buy because the components look so cool. I actually bought two of them because they looked so amazing. In case one of mine ever goes away, it gets scummy, I'll have a second copy. Whew. 
Yeah, Velcro could work with something like that. I'd be a little worried that the weight might be a little too much, unless you're planning on like looping it around the front of the pumpkin. Sticking up from the back, I think the weight might be a little bit too heavy for Velcro. Of course, it's your project, and I can't visualize it, so... <laughs> I just have to trust. You know what you're doing. <laughs> of which I have no doubt. A loop. All right. Gotcha. Well, shoot me a picture when you're done with it. I'll be very curious to see what you got. Responds, reminds me, I need to respond to some of my YouTube correspondence. Somebody was asking if they could send me a picture, and I need to tell them, yes, go on Facebook to Unhallowed. Oh, nice. Makes me wonder how much mine can support. I got some of that really good Velcro, too. Thick witch wood, baby. That's what we're going for. Pit bull pumpkin, interesting. That should look pretty cool. My latest one is just a toothy fanged maw. I'm hearing a lot of weird sounds from my living room. I'm just going to check real quick and make sure that the fuzz balls didn't knock over something that is now making strange noises. Hi, cat. Did you knock over something that's making weird noises? Landlord's kid playing something in his upstairs room. Ooh. Oh, nice. I've dealt with many a pity in my time. They've all been sweet, lovable dogs. dogs are pretty sweet and lovable unless of course they've been trained not to be or raised in a really miserable spot now, I'm just gonna kill that subject now because that's gonna make me feel all sorts of and we already got enough of that today thank you very much NBT Bank <laughs> and lawyers and whatnot and New York State Tax Departments No, I don't need me to crap on my own day. I have the government for that. <laughs> Let's get something in there, too. Let's take this up a little higher. Come on. Kind of one of those days where I wish I had multiple cameras. I wish I had one right up here that looked down on the work that I could adjust so it would be more visible to you guys. I don't know. In time.
in time. There will be multiple cameras, and I will have one of those fun little push buttony things where I can say, go to this camera, go to that camera, show multiple cameras. Dun, dun, dun. One day. I'll have to build some kind of cool multi-camera armature, by which I mean build a, get a desk lamp arm and stick a camera on that. There we go. Add some witch wood. Oh yeah, one little bit down there. I wonder what game that kid is playing. It is loud. Actually, no, yeah, I don't even wonder. If a student or somebody of high school age is playing a game these days, it's probably Fortnite. For the most part. Alright. It's much thicker. Back. Let's make it much thicker. And the front. can't buy this house. It'd be somewhat annoying. I was very much looking forward to having a place of my own come November. Yep. Yep, but if this place needs flood insurance and <laughs> The owner doesn't want to drop his price by many thousands of dollars to make my payments comparable. This will fall through. Or if New York State tax wants some disgusting amount of money, this will also fall through. But then I'll just take care of the tax bill and see what's up. Yep. Keep saving money. Eventually something will pop up. There's a few other homes in the area that aren't bad. I really want something I can haunt, though. There's a nice little place out of town that's cheap, but I really want to be able to haunt my own freaking house. Yeah, pretty much. Just have a little faith in the Norns. <laughs> Despite the fact that they really don't give a damn about me, but have faith in them anyway. Pour a little mead on the ground. Uh. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do Friday. My folks are in Maine for vacation, and I've got to go make sure their cat is okay and taken care of. Maybe I'll bring a bottle of mead and do a little blotter. 
up there. Bring a drum. You got in trouble, Sergeant. Uh oh. What trouble did you get into? <laughs> Was it a too much mead trouble? Too f uh oh. Rut row, yep. Carboy had too much in it. Yeah, half full on your brewing apparatus is usually your safe level. Whether it's a bucket or a carboy or whatever. How's it going, Raven? <laughs> yep! <laughs> Kersplody fermentation areas will make a mess. And usually at that point, your mead gets bacteria in it. And, uh, well, <laughs> it just doesn't at that point, so... Sometimes, if you're lucky, the meat stays sterile, but more often than not, it does not. Oh. No more cotton. No more cotton. No time is it 1034 I can go till pardon 11 oh you were ordered to throw it oh <laughs> uh, did it explode in a carpeted area that's the case I can understand getting honey out of carpets oh yep 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 you gotta get honey out of carpets don't <sighs> on the hardwood floor in the basements my friend <laughs> and the truly wise man puts down a sheet of polyplastic underneath it <laughs> I should have mentioned that when we were talking about it last time. <laughs> but now you know. <laughs> Somebody cue the PSA little rainbow thing. Oh, no basements in California. Is a flooding risk? Why are there no basements in California? Sounds ominous. Ah, gotcha. Well, you could small batch it. <laughs> Just hide a small gallon jug somewhere. No base. You still got me hung up on no basements in California. I'm imagining a castle with no mirrors. I do not like mirrors. Why no mirrors? <laughs> What's wrong with the count? <laughs> yeah, it just seems completely crazy to me. There shall be no mirror, no basements in California. Basements are where the undead will rise from. <laughs> we must not have them here. Well, I can understand fast building, but there's so many advantages to a basement. No attics and no basements? I'm 
not moving to California then. Your building code people are all insane. What? There's got to be a good reason that I don't know, but to me right now that just sounds like madness. I mean, all of California? Everywhere? The whole thing? Because California is a big state. You go from practically redwoods in the north to, you know, <laughs> the armpit of hell in the south. <laughs> Okay, so Southern California. It still just sounds nuts to me. No basements. Ah, there's a the dark history behind that. That's like a. All right. Yeah, earthquakes. Okay, okay. I said there's got to be a good reason I don't know. That's a good reason. I was about to say, that's some Dan Sam and Dean Winchester crap right there. The basements tried to take over in 1895. In 1947, they tried it again, but the Winchesters went back in time and stopped them. The whole of Carolina, though? I don't think you guys are that far below sea level. Or those guys. I'm not. I haven't really memorized where everybody's from, sorry. <laughs> yeah, alright. I mean, earthquakes make a lot of sense. If your house has a giant cavity underneath it. And things shift. <laughs> Your house could fall in, at least partially, or suffice to say, enough structural damage can be done to topple the building. But if it's on a slab, the slab at least has the opportunity to move a little bit with the earth as well. Same principle as putting a piece of uh, plywood on rollers, or omnidirectional rollers, as opposed to rooting it and then shaking the whole table. <laughs> Why you live in these crazy lands that clearly do not want you? <laughs> the one land it turns into water. This land, the earth shakes and trembles at the mention of humans. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could do that. I think if I had to move somewhere, I'd try to move somewhere in New England. Ugh. Alright, yeah. Again, that also makes sense. Yep. To my northern and central New York sensibilities, that just sounds like madness. Couldn't, couldn't be comfy. Wouldn't feel like a house. <laughs> Careful with that lot. <laughs> uh, I know, though, I bet you don't have the same problem that many folks I've heard of have with it. I know some people who treat the lot of like their retirement plan. <laughs> well, I'm 82 and my numbers hit, and I'm going to go and I'm going to do all these fun things. 
What if they don't? <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to find a... <laughs> Let's face it, at this point, you're going to have to find a friend's house <laughs> to play host to your fermentation, baby. <laughs> Because remarrying is probably not an option. <laughs> uh, Ten bucks a week. Uh, I've always had my doubts about Lotto, and then I watched a, a couple of enlightening videos, and now it's like, God, I just, I don't even want to touch this stuff at all. <laughs> Uh, I watch way too many episodes of Adam Ruins Everything. That's much better. That's a lot thicker. Most of the vines go up towards the top of the skull. I want to thicken what's coming out of this eye socket, though. Let's really make sure this is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> now nope, that's seldom an option. Sergeant, seldom an option. And if I had a wife, I wouldn't want to leave her for anything either. Unless it was a truly awful relationship. But I like to think that I would not even get involved in one of those. I've had the chance to get involved in awful relationships, and I have stayed clear of every single one. <sighs> I'm not that smart. <laughs> put on a good act sometimes, but if I was smart, years ago I would have started re religiously dieting and exercising. But I have a great danger sense when it comes to that. <laughs> You're right, I don't. No clue. Oh well. As Stacy said earlier, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. <laughs> you know, I blame the food less than I blame the culture. food far less than I blame the culture. <laughs> well, I'm not going to eat cake, but I will craft and be happy. I'm actually looking forward to getting back on that med, because it was so easy to eat right when I was on that. Not so much in terms of quality of food, but portion control was so easy. I love food, too. <laughs> Obviously, but... Oh, 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 sorry, Chris, I didn't see you pop on there. 
Yeah, I've actually heard about that, Chris. Group of folks who bought every lotto ticket in a certain uh, certain lottery, and the cost of it was less than uh, the actual winnings, so they made out. Oh, that was so good. I don't, it couldn't have been Powerball because there's way too many folks who uh, can get that from almost every single gas station and frequently do. I remember it being like a paper ticket that was put on by uh, some lotto company. Because I remember watching a show about it and they were worried because there was one crate of tickets that they were not able to purchase and they were deathly afraid that their entire investment... Uh, was going to go up in smoke because they didn't have all the tickets. But lucky for them, the ticket that was the right one was one that they had. Slim Hain, how you doing? Did you come down from your nip high? Hi. Get some pets? Yeah, good boy. That's my good Sam. Oh. Yeah, you don't lick that. That's mache paste. Whew. Yeah, German food is good. Nope, no blueberry soda tonight. I have been off my meds for a little over a week and a half due to uh, hospital, pharmacy, and insurance incompetence. And if they're going to be idiots and not get me the meds, then I'm going to at least have some mead in this brief window that I have. Blueberry soda soon though. My folks went to uh, Maine and they're going to get me some at the source. Maybe it was a different group, Chris. At least the show I watched it was a single uh, limited event. <laughs> I love German food, I gotta say. I really, I, I love it on the every now and again um, level. I don't know if I could do German food on the constant, but God, every now and again, it's such a nice treat because I don't get it all the time. Blackberry mead. Really? Funny you should mention that. Oh, this is honey mead and raspberry wine. So this is raspberry. Which is weird because it's like a blackberry. I don't know. It's delicious. It's the most yumderful mead that you can get commercially. The brand is Earl Estates Meadery. Black Jewel is the name of the stuff. It is a Finger Lakes winery slash meadery. Stuff is so good. Oh my god. It's not very high in alcohol content at all, but it's like a it's such a sweet, fruity, yummy, numish thing. I don't know. I've been crafting and drinking. Don't don't ask me for anything right now. <laughs> Nice. Well, I got a brew again at some point. I've got a bunch of honey. I've got a, actually a half a carboy of apple spice mead behind me that I just haven't bottled in, you know, a year and a half. Hmm. I don't know if there's anything more I can do on this skull tonight. However, the next time I do anything to the skull, I'm going to be staining it. Because this thing is... All sorts of set. And I can't twist that too much further, but there we go. This thing is really, 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 really pretty much done.
have to do is stain it, string it. It's going to need some Velcro to secure its back. Slap it into the lantern. And the lantern's got to get some panels uh, put on the inside over the window section. So i got to clean the center of the lantern. And then the lantern will be done. Minus uh, a urethane coat because there's no way in hell that I'm going to not waterproof that. Hello, Wadman out. How's it going? Just finishing up that skull for witch wooding. And earlier, we did or finished this bottle. Which I wonder if I can get some red liquid in there now. I can't remember what I did with those food colors that I was using for that. You'd think they wouldn't have gone that far. I think I moved them over by the kitchen because I wanted them out of here. Yes, in fact, the more I think of it, the more I'm relatively sure they're over there. Yep, that is a mirror. This is several mirrors. This is a mirror bottle. And I've done ones with the jewels and ones with the skeletons. But this one, I wanted a lot of mirror fragments on there. I like mirror fragments. They add a little uh, vivaciousness to a prop. Which reminds me, I still got to put uh, aluminum pieces in the... Uh, the Soul Taker Talisman's eyes. Oh, and yeah, I got this gold bottle. So I can't work anymore on the skull. I may as well use the last of this cotton to do the bottom of the the gold nugget bottle here. The viney stuff, odd man, is made from cotton, specifically in this case cotton balls, that have been unrolled a little bit, dipped into paper mache paste, and then laid upon whatever surface. In this case, it's the glass of the bottles. And they make an incredibly stringy, viney effect, which does not require hours of excessive texturing at the micro level. As soon as you slap it on there, it is pretty much done. And I have used this stuff to create the witch orbs up here. I have a tutorial for those on my YouTube channel. If you follow that name that's blinking with the crazy little eye there, Drakenfang, that's the YouTube channel. In fact, why am I saying that? There's a link to it in the Twitch. I just fixed that today. And there's uh, tutorials on how to make both the witch orbs and the witch bottle, which all use this uh, effect. It makes great vines and great bits of wood looking stuff with again minimal effort and no excessive sculpting required it's just done for you as soon as you slap it onto a surface yep this one here is another Completed bottle with, as soon as I grab its remote control, hi cat, come on, on, I said on, this is one that I came in a couple days ago and I found that the, uh, the unit was on, really, we're going to pull this now? Fine. Maybe the battery went kaput. Yeah, the battery went kaput. So, off. I said off. Wow, this thing really... That's why this thing went. It's not responding to the remote. It's battery shot. That's fine. I have six more. Let's do a little demo with one that works better. 
do 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 there we go and let's get a fade effect so there is the more completed witch bottle project echo turn off craft light uh -oh. the echo unit is this one's been on the fritz a little bit lately Let's repower it. There we go, it's reconnecting. But yeah, that's the project. So you get a glowing uh, thing here. And as soon as this smack roll, well, no. I'm close enough, I can just reach over and get it. So you get a glowing ingredient bottle which changes colors by remote control. Meow. What for do you meow, kitten? The problem with that remote is it likes to trigger other remotes. One's got French fried batteries. Just pull them out. Come on. Get some bets. Yeah, we gotta play later, cat. Fuzzball's in a mood. Which means he needs to play. We'll get out the stick with the ribbons. We'll drive you a little nuts later on, Fuzz Place. What type of batteries are these, incidentally? These are, these are probably 206, 2032s. CR 2032s. There's a little hazard sign telling them not to put near babies. I'll make sure not to do that. Okay. Let's use up this stuff, and then it will be around 11 o'clock. It will be time to drink the rest of that mead down and slink off to bed to read the next uh, next book in the Saxon Chronicles that I just got in the mail a day or so ago. Yuck, 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 yuck. I do love that book series. The last one book was amazing. Probably one of the best ones in there. Let's get some filaments for the bottom. Tiny pieces on the bottle. Right over there, have a good night. We'll catch you next time around. Cat says good night too, apparently. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Yeah, the nice thing with those is you get to pick the color. And they're relatively cheap as far as lights go. I've got them in pretty much, they're all my witch bottles, except for two, but they were the prototypes. And I didn't know about those yet. And the witch orbs. I should probably do another tutorial just on those tiny little ingredients. <laughs> I don't know if I need to do a tutorial on the ingredient models. If you've seen the one in the witch bottles, you get the idea. You can adapt it to anything. Unless you're one of those Google auto response people who have no creativity. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys use Gmail, but I found out that in their latest version, when you get an email 
at the bottom of the email they give you like three or four pre-generated responses like if you say you know I received this th or they say I received this thing they'll give you like thanks thanks for letting me know and you can just hit that button and it will like auto reply with that response I'm like are you kidding me <laughs> do you knuckleheads know what this is the start of this is the start of computers doing your thinking for you. Don't do this crap. <sighs> and at work, I can't disable it. They don't trust us to be able to handle our own internet connection enough to say, no, I don't want the thing that auto-generates responses. <sighs> horrible, horrible, horrible. <sighs> About a quarter of a stein left. Hmm. Been so pleasant. Yeah, I, I really can't stand that thing. I like Gmail, but don't you dare tell me what to think, computer. <laughs> I'm a grown ass man. I can respond to emails by my own damn self. Thank you very much. <laughs> some of these uh, sections at the bottom it means that next time we'll be able to stain the the gold nugget experimental bottle here I don't know if I like the metallics in this thing but this will tell me if I do for sure or not. And if I hate it, then on Halloween night, it's going to be like, here you go. <laughs> Take this away. You can have this bottle. Really? Yes. Get it out of my sight. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> this stuff is so cool. Good. Here you go. Take a piece of it with you. No, Sam, you're not going to get a bottle. You're at the heart of the bottles. We make them all here, buddy. Oh, good boy. Good boy, Fuzzy Bear. All right, so we got that go down. You cover up that some more. Fuzzball. Ah, good. We're down to stringy bits. Stringy bits are the perpetual last of a project. covered. That one's covered. This one's mostly covered. Hmm. 
it's nice and productive. I'm glad I streamed tonight. Oh, glad that skull is set. Lantern's one step closer to completion. If I get really good at this streaming thing at some point, I want to have like a crafting challenge. I want to get like five random bits of garbage. Or maybe like seven. And then have people vote on which objects of the seven, say three of seven or four of seven. And I have to use those plus paper mache to make something spooky. something like that when I really just need a creative challenge. Okay. Well, with that, we've hit the limit of what we can do, and it's 11.10 p.m. So that was a good streamity stream. Shade paste wrapped up. One bottle done. Another bottle just needing stain. And the skull just needing stain. And a little waterproofing. Yeah, we're well, just moving right along. That's fantastic. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just all right. Pick. Pick three of these, three or four of these seven objects, and I have to make something creepy out of it. Oh. Oh. That'll be a while from now, though. I gotta do the pumpkin sentinel, which means I gotta make a pumpkin. That's gonna take a while. Um. I gotta see where the hell this whole house thing goes. So I can't get a, a large craft room or really clear a lot of space here. Doing a sentinel is gonna be tough. So I just won't have the room for it. <sighs> but I'll have to do it because it'll be fun. My haunt really needs a pumpkin sentinel. <laughs> really, really badly. Oh. I even downloaded, I think I downloaded Unhinged Productions um, PDF tutorial on how to make a groundbreaker so I can try to grab some of the best parts of uh, his methods. And if it works really well, I'll make a tutorial on it. And that'll be fun. And everything will be happy. Hopefully. Oh. As much as I would love to guzzle this right here, I do want to sip this carefully. Well, the loan's all set. The problem I hit, Sergeant, was that I've got a tax warrant out based on when they said I made 70 plus thousand dollars a couple of years ago. And I yelped back at them that I have never made 70 plus thousand dollars in my entire life. You're wrong. Stop doing it. And they would not hear of that. So then they started garnishing me uh, unjustly because I paid my taxes in the right amount. But they think I owed more. I figured I did owe some more from when I was young and stupid, but that's long since over with now. And I can't buy the house until that tax warrant is cleared. So I have to go to war with the tax department. But fortunately, I know it's because of an error on their part and not because I've been tax dodging or anything stupid like that. I pay my taxes. And then the other problem is that according to 
the bank, this house is in a flood zone. And my landlord told me this was not in a flood zone. And the guy who owned this house before him never had to pay flood insurance. So if this house is in fact in a flood zone, I am either going to lower my offering price drastically because I cannot afford to pay an extra two, three hundred a month in flood insurance on this place, or I'm just going to let the deal go because if this place is in a flood zone, that's that's two, three thousand dollars a year on friggin' flood insurance, and that's ridiculous. It's better just to place buy a similarly priced house that's not in a bloody flood zone. It's insane. It's madness. It's not even Sparta. Right, little black cat? Right. <laughs> I gotta go play with this little furball. Yeah, I can't blame you. Yeah, earthquake insurance gotta be the same thing, if not worse. The insurance business is really... Ugh. <laughs> I can't stand them. Can't stand them. They ruin so many normally sensibly priced things. Oh god, this stuff is delicious. So nice. Well, gang, it's 11:14 by my watch over here on the Happy Doodly East Coast. My little flak furball needs some playtime before he can go to bed cuz he feels all dejected. So, I'm going to give him some stuff. Thank you all very, very much for hanging out with me again. It was a lot of fun. Chilling out and uh, getting stuff done. <laughs> and I will catch you all next time I stream. Today is Wednesday. Take care, odd man out. So, let's see here. Wednesday. Tomorrow I have doctor's appointment. War with the New York State Tax Department. And hoping my landlord comes up with something... To say this place is not in a flood zone. I may pop on to stain these two things. Probably won't be a long stream. If I do pop on on Friday. I, don't know, I will be streaming sometime between here and Saturday. Greater than or, or less than or equal to Saturday. Will be the next time that I am around. So good stuff. And again thanks everybody. Cheers. And have a grand old evening. Catch you around. Yep, night buff. Cat, would you like to go play with the stick with the ribbons on it? Would that be fun? You're not meowing dejectedly anymore, so I assume you're not as miserable, but we should go play. Let's see if the device is working. Alexa! Or no, no, it's Echo now. Echo, turn off craft light. Craft Light isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. No, well, Craft Light's fine. Turn off Craft Light. Sorry, I'm not sure. Turn off Craft Light! Craft Light isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. I have a feeling it's this unit and not the actual connection. Have a good one, folks. I'm going to go kick the butt of my... Uh... My Amazon device here, which is misbehaving. Catch y'all later. Oh, hey, yeah. Let's put this back in the fridge. Oh, yeah, dry. Oh, I'm 70 kinds of frizzles. Move, cat. Come on. There you go. Ah. Camera slide. And trying. Awesome.